What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Here's the Scenario podcast. Looking a little different today, but in no way worse. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Feeney, being joined with me as always. By Mike Cannon. You could say our show is 300 pounds light. <laughs> You're saying we cut the fat. Is that what it is? We, uh, we are going old school today. We're doing an Irish goodbye. Here's the scenario because yeah. uh, uh, Brendan Sagalo is not here with us we've any listened, longer on earth yeah died. we've we've listened to your critiques and your feedback <laughs> miss igp where's igp and you know what we cut him loose that's right he is you're welcome he is really upset with us but there's nothing we can do you know this yeah. is just we give the people what they want and that is uh igp uh hts <laughs> bpt rip everybody's dead in his family so he's like mourning yeah. I mean, that's the less funny way to say it, I guess. <laughs> so bad. if you've never watched this show before, uh, this is a hypothetical based podcast where we answer your questions that you submit to us on our Instagram at uh, here's the scenario pod. You can also go to here's the scenario dot com for everything. Uh, Mike Cannon, Brendan Sagalo and myself, as well as where to get the podcast, all that other stuff. It's great. Uh, get on there. And if you enjoy the show, which you will get on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash scenario pod. Boy, won't you be happy you signed up for as little as $5 a month. Bonus episodes, early sneak peeks of our videos. Uh, I mean, there's- every, every week, not like monthly. Like yes, yes, yes. Other podcasts. You don't understand. We are, we're putting in work. There's like three to four uploads a week yeah. of content. You can't possibly keep up. Audio, video. If you are keeping up, I question both your sanity and your employment. Because right. because one of those two things can't be missing, if not both. Imagine like there's a doctor who only gets into flow state pre-surgery by listening to us infight. That would be great. <laughs> I mean, the last episode, a lot of infighting. A lot, so that, lot. So maybe yeah. that's regrettable. What, that was, that was, was the regrettable. <laughs> that Especially was, following such a good episode, we probably got like a shitload new listeners. Yeah, and then they're like, oh. This isn't the show. Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> magic was only able to be harnessed for a it's, small amount of time. It's much more furious yeah. than usual. Oh uh, man, we should do a hypercut of all the times. That's what we really that should really be a clip now that the episode's out and you have already made the clip. But Nicole, we should do a clip of all of the times Mike got trampled over in that episode and yeah. just all his reactions of anger. I just watched the vein just <laughs> yeah. pulse out of my head. Yeah. I watched that scene or, or the clip and at the end is when I like started the heat Oh yeah, rising. you could hear the talking Dude, over. That was just like a Harry Potter lightning bolt across yeah. my fucking forehead. I see forehead. it now, you talking I about know, it. I know, I know, it brings it back immediately. <laughs> I also, I don't know if I brushed my teeth today. Do you ever just not know yeah, I mean, once you start drinking and eating stuff, it's all out the window. Yeah, but. it doesn't matter. But it's to the point where, like, it it feels like I both did and didn't. And I think I did, but I don't You'd know. You'd know if you did. No, that's that not true. That minty freshness. You don't understand what the mornings are like with a two-year-old, dude. It is yeah. legitimately a Tasmanian devil punting every object soft and hard into every glass. What about brushing your teeth together? Like <clears throat> we you do brush. that. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't this morning, though. It's oh. impossible. So then you didn't brush. Probably not. There's no way you brush. No, but uh, I ate gum, so sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so worse. So yeah. cavities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we have a ton of questions that we're gonna we're gonna get to, and if some of these were like, you know, you were hoping Brendan would answer them, maybe he can live tweet, listen back to the episode. <laughs> yeah, and he live is active tweet. on social. Yeah, right no one has tweeted more in their history <laughs> than <laughs> Brendan, especially from a wake. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and it's always good to have those, uh, volatile emotional times on record. Yeah. <laughs> the angst, sadness, yeah. anger. Spikes. Yeah. I've always found that my best, least regrettable work is when I'm uh, <laughs> most, most vulnerable yeah. out of my mind. <laughs> so this first question comes from Muthani. Um, what is your, this Christmas season is upon us. What is your least favorite part of Christmas? Family. <laughs> Not yours. No, not mine. But, um, you know, someone's. Some, but I think actually the act of buying, you know what I yeah. mean? Like the money doesn't bother me. No. The thought doesn't bother me. 
the act of either online or in person, just finding it and all that shit, taking your credit card out. It's never in my pocket. I'm always running to the opposite end of the, of the house or wherever coming back. It's timed out. Yeah. I had to do the entire yeah. thing all over again. And then in person, you're like trying to dodge every fucking snot person in their and their mother. See, I don't mind the, the act of doing it. I hate the thought of it. I hate the <laughs> I, I hate the thought of having to think. What do I get for my cousin? You know what I mean? Like you buy your cousin's gifts. Well, we're go. So here's what happens when I go every other year. We go to my we go to my dad's house, or we go with my or we go to my dad's family or my mom's family. And when we're with my dad's family, it's easy. It's like you know, you get something for your dad, and then I'll get something for my aunt because she does so much for us and everything. But then you, uh, everyone else is like in a grab bag. Like you get Secret Santa, so it's like everyone gets one gift for yeah. one other person. Yeah, that's it. And my mom's out of the family. We don't do that. And everyone says we're not getting each other gifts. And then every year we, every other year we show up and everyone has got us something. Sure. And we look like fucking assholes. It's the Michael Scott with an iPod at the Christmas yeah. oh, party. Just made it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so we always. Wow. Is that the first successful episode? No cursing in five <laughs> minutes? A million views. I mean, it's no wonder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was a, it's always like that. So now it's like, you know, you try and get small. Like I'm talking like. $25 and less gifts. Yeah. But even that is so hard to think of like a cheap, like chintzy gift. That's also kind drone, of drone, dude, cheap drone. It's the best we've talked My cousin about. It has before. like a thousand dollar drone. Yeah. All right. Well, that a weed like I buy That's kind of for the adults in my family. I'll typically maybe you give weed. I have, I used to do that uh, for my agent when I gave him a gift, when he earned his gift. <laughs> There was a time. There was a time. <laughs> there was a time I thought he might. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just for prospect. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was, I was buying it in goodwill. Yeah, I hate the having to think about what to get everybody else because it's so stressful because, you know, it's like during the year, you're like, oh, that would be a great gift for that person. That would be a great gift for that person. And then you, that's what I'm going to start doing, I think, starting next year, is anytime I see a gift for somebody where I go, you know who would love that? Yeah. Mike, I'm buying it for him. And then I'm going to hold on to it and just fill my house up for a year and hope I remember. Nicole wife, not producer, not sure how she is at this, but is incredible at that stuff. Like routinely buys cards that remind her of people. Like if it just sparks like a thought, she's yeah. like perfect and just gets them. And so she has this backlog of cards to give to everybody on every occasion. Wow. And I'm so jealous of her thoughtfulness. So thoughtful. And absolutely will not change. <laughs> yeah. Erica's a great gift giver too. She'll like, she'll leave the apartment and be like, I gotta find something for, you know, a friend or whatever. And yeah. then she'll like come back and I'm like, where are you even going? Like, you don't even know, like you get in the car and just be like, let me see where it takes me. Like she doesn't even have plans. And then she'll go into some little, like, you know, one of those stores they have in Queens and Brooklyn where they just have a little bit of everything. And, mm -hmm. but they're like, you know, everything's kind of like homemade and more artisanal kind of a thing. Yes. And then she comes out with like three things that totally make the person's personality. You know what it's I mean? It's unreal. Yeah. My mom is like that where she's is it women. Is it just women? I think it's women, but uh, my mom is an artist. So she, yeah. she's big on like homemade gifts, but like cool, like art piece gifts sure. that you could put into your home. Yeah. And every single time, it perfectly encapsulated encapsulates who you are as a person and what you need in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> like I remember one year she just painted you, your dad hugging you. <laughs> <laughs> she took it up composite yeah. <laughs> pictures that definitely was never existed before. Yeah. So. yeah. There's an interpretation. Yeah, dude, she, I remember, I forget what it was, but it was years ago and I was having like a hard time, like just, it just like <laughs> you, <laughs> me, weird. No. but just like having an outwardly hard time where I was just openly fighting demons sure. and everybody noticed. So my mom made me this like collage, almost mosaic art piece. that was like kind of 3d, but also in a floating frame of this, like, uh, what was it? It was some sort of samurai presenting the samurai uh, sword. Like that was the main image. And underneath said, like, you got this. And it was wow. like, with like, you know, alligator heads, like kind of floating in and all this stuff, which was so weird because at the time I was like, I think I was waiting on some, I think I was waiting to hear 
if I got Adam Devine's house party and I had like, which was at one point, I mean, people huge. will laugh about it now. It was like, people were wondering if that was going to replace like the tonight show in terms premium of importance. Blend, yeah. It's premium blend stuff. because it was, that was like one of the last, uh, one of the last stand up shows Showcase. on, uh, yeah. On comedy yeah. central. And it was cool because he was a name. He was hilarious. Yes. They were doing sketches. So you were Work kind of, was killing yeah, it at the you were time kind of involved in the world a little yeah. bit. So it was like an ex and it was in Hawaii. So it was a super exciting one year. Thing. It was one year. <laughs> and I had like the set of my audition life. Right. For that show. Like Ricky Velez and I went back to back and both of us were like, well, see you there. <laughs> yeah. See you. See you in Hawaii. Fist yeah. bump, all that shit. Neither of us got it. And I was while I was waiting for the email, just assuming it was coming any hour, any day. I had this dream where I opened up my computer, saw an unread email from Comedy Central and a tornado ripped the wall <laughs> off of our apartment and flew in. And out of nowhere, there's three feet of water and alligators coming across my fucking living room. So I had this dream, this obvious fever dream of anxiety. Sure. My, I didn't tell my mom. She had no idea, but she made this thing of a samurai saying, you got this with a sword fighting a fucking alligator. Which only furthered your uh, divine notion that you would be on Adam Divine. <laughs> oh, and in the dream, I had such bad anxiety. I was fighting the alligator off with the inside of a paper towel. So oh. like the cardboard, it was like getting wet and I was stabbing it soft. <laughs> I mean, who cares? <laughs> Dry. It's not doing anything. Who cares if it's wet <laughs> at maximum strength? It's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. yeah, that's a nightmare. Very thoughtful gift. Yeah, great gift giver. Um, okay, we have another one from Mutoni. Besides making more money, what is something you would like to have in your life or something on your bucket list? There's no garbage pail there. Is there not? There is not. I thought that went in. It was so fucking perfect. Yeah, if it would have gone anything there. there, it was there. If there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nicole, could I have another water too? Yeah. That's why. Have, um, that's why I have six here. Yeah. Uh, if so, if you could have, if you could, besides making more money, if there's something uh, you'd like to have in your life, what is it or something on your bucket list? Thank you. Um, Those are two different questions. I feel like something to have in your life is I feel like less tangible than a bucket list thing. Which right. Is, I don't know. <sighs> bucket list. I mean, there's like I have bucket list bands, which now it's a funny like my my bucket list bands for basically the three of them that are left are Foo Fighters, Pearl Jam, Metallica, and I had tickets to see Metallica last July. I got canceled because of COVID. Um, Pearl Jam, I just missed. And then the, I, I tried to actually get them the second they went on sale. And because of bots, they were bought up instantly. Yeah. But just went on sale, just bought tickets, going to see Foo Fighters at City Field nice. in July. You know so, Foo Fighters. So there'll be pretty. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't <laughs> I, you come back not on mushrooms? By saving. I had a great time. Yeah. Even still. Well, until after the, saving the somebody smash. Still, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it at least added a hallucination to a otherwise dreadful situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, bucket list stuff though. I think, yeah, bands are kind of the only thing that I have. Like I have no, I have no dream to skydive or anything I like used that. To, I, I never like wanted to do it. I just assumed I would do it. And then there <laughs> became the chance of like, I'll do it before I'm 30. I'll do yeah. it in my 30. And now that I'm past that, I'm like, I mean, not, I don't. I don't have a desire. If if all of us were like, we're going skydiving. I'm like, all right, but I, yeah, yeah. I won't bring myself. I do it for it. Patreon. Yeah, I would. Absolutely. A thousand patrons. We'll do it. We'll do it. I dive. That Erica, actually is a great idea. Erica was uh, was like, I'm fucking it was her. I'm going skydiving before I'm 30. And then like the day she turned 30, I was like, you want to go skydiving? She's like, fuck that. Never. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? How did that go? Away? I'll go when I'm like 70. Like you ever see those people who are at the tail yeah. end and they're like, the yeah, I'll skin do Skin flaps are just I, yeah, well, blowing. That's what I don't understand is how they're not so hollow boned and flabbity skinned that they just get like the wind takes them into the sun yeah, they just squirrel suit <laughs> yeah just <laughs> back to the retirement home i i don't know i'm trying to How think good of, was that parachute noise? it was a great parachute noise. uh i'm trying to think of something else that i i mean there's places i want to travel obviously you know i want to see greece i want to go back to italy i want to you know every time i see now even a movie that takes place in europe yeah. it's like this like this romantic yearning that i have to be you know a part of me is still 
Like, maybe I'll be in another life someday and I won't need to live in New York and I'll just fucking live in Europe. Like, you ever yeah. do that scenario yeah, yeah. where you're playing out, like, in, in, how your life's going to play out as if you're still 18? Well, I want you to know that if infinite string theory is a reality, mm -hmm. there is a dimension where that is your life. Oh, boy. Cool. It was probably was pretty happy. Just take solace in that. I do that for everything I don't do. I just <laughs> say, well, another mic did it. <laughs> <laughs> so just the simple fact that I thought of it, somebody's doing it. Yeah, but you want the you want the memory of it, you know. And it, you actually brought up a very you just good make it up, dude. Yeah, but I've been you, just making up memories. It's you, great. You brought up well. There's a difference between memories we say on podcasts and then become the truth, and also our we call it a reimagining no, of the truth. You remember when I had sex with Rihanna? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was right after I was done uh, was banging crazy. out Britney Spears. She was, was the one that told me to take off the condom. Like, I yeah. did it out of respect, but she was like, just take it off. Yeah. It. Finish yeah. inside. Rude, rude reluctant. boy, get it off. <laughs> <laughs> but she, uh, no, it's 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 a strange, you know, you have the thing. You, had, you said, actually, I think a very uh, profound thing that went under the radar last week when we were recording. We didn't say it on the podcast, of course, but uh, you were. So, yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. You saved it for nobody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you were saying about how I was saying how I had a conversation with my grandfather uh, before he passed. And I talked for like hours and I was like, I wrote down things, but I don't really remember the things or where I wrote it down. But you were saying like talking to the memory of you having that experience is something that you'll remember forever, which is so true, which is how I think it is for a lot of things. But especially with, you know, like when I think about like going to Europe or whatever, like there are certain like, oh, sure, I'll remember certain. Oh, remember the time we went to that place and right, this thing. Right. But just that like it's that being a tourist in a in a place that is in English, like it's such a foreign concept to us, even though, of course, it makes like literal sense. But it just is that thing where you're like, it doesn't feel I don't know. Like you were there and you remember the feeling of being there more than the trivia of being there. Yeah. That's the whole exactly. point. Similarly to talking to your grandpa where it's like, I don't need to like look back at that and be like, well, well look at that. He was third marshal in the gay squad. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. It's like that was the his fact official title. <laughs> Third on the gay squad. Uh, but the simple fact that you sat there with him and remember the feeling of learning about his life and having that experience where you're taking in history right. from somebody you love, that's that's it. And that's where I feel like true, you know, like n knowledge or um, or kind of like, in, uh, yeah, I guess knowledge is learned. Be it's not just like classroom stuff. It's like when you go to another country and it's the stupidest thing too, because it's, again, this is all so obvious, but it, it's a different experience when you're there. Like when you see the Roman Colosseum, you know, and yeah. you're like, this has been here. I mean, th like the oldest things in history in New York are, you know, a couple hundred years old. Right, and this right. is like, you're talking thou like it's it's so weird. And then you go into like the Vatican or whatever, you'll see stuff from BC, from 5000 BC, or, you know, you go to like the Louvre in Paris and you're seeing all these things that like cavemen whittled together. And it just is so even going to <laughs> the Louvre, a big caveman exhibit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, the um the what's it called? Like going Pompeii was nuts. Like walking yeah. around the city of Pompeii and being like, I am standing. Cause they still have, they just don't have the roofs anymore. Cause they all like collapsed on them and stuff, but they still have like the walls and you're literally walking through like this. It was somebody's living room yeah, in lava in the living yeah, room. Yeah. In like 600, whatever, when was Pompeii? Like uh, 500 or like 60? 1989. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. It was, uh, but it's just so weird to, to really think about how long we've been around. Although in the grand scheme of things man it's we're just kind of back a, we're we're the last day on the calendar of that's right of of uh of our advent of our, yeah yeah <laughs> um so that i hope answered your question what was Funny. the question <laughs> about bucket lists and stuff oh yeah uh nicole what's up did you have <laughs> when when pompeii was 79 ad 79 ad wow, wow. that's fucking that's great. a while ago it's quite some time ago mm -hmm. okay this is from Tara, hey guys, this scenario is probably more geared towards Canon's interest, but I am curious. If you could score the lead role in any musical, what role would you play and why? And just to reaffirm the Canadian love, I know a bunch of people I've introduced to your comedy over the years and would love to see you. Toronto's the obvious choice, but if you want to make it worth the trip, I have a few friends who run some clubs in Hamilton, Lon London, Ontario, which are an hour and two hours from Toronto, respectively, would happily help them get in contact with whomever could make that happen. Thanks for keeping me laughing. I mean, right. that's 
great. Is yeah, she, I'm trying to go out to Toronto. Is she our manager now? She is. Um, uh, I, I'll be in uh, Alaska, Canada in April. <laughs> <laughs> Alaska, Canada. I don't know. It's cold. It's up there, right? Yeah. No. Light. <laughs> a lot of light. Um, uh, what was... Uh, Nicole's coming, too. Did we tell you this? No. We're doing... Dude, we're shooting like a Bear Grylls comedy documentary what? over a three-night run in Alaska, and when Northern is Lights is happening. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, dude. That's crazy. Fuck yeah. March 31st through April 2nd. Whoa. Yeah, we're going to be in Alaska. That's going to be crazy. <laughs> Fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, what, uh, is Sagla going? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why? So he could join the other polar bear? <laughs> yeah. He just, he just notices one from his childhood. He yeah. runs back and hugs a guy. <laughs> um, what, so what role from a musical lead role and why? Man. I mean, I think the obvious choice for me is, uh, Jack Kelly from Newsies, mm -hmm. the Christian Bale part, but the stage show isn't my favorite. Like the stage show of Newsies is kind of like, eh. it's got yeah. a few more interludes, a few more songs that suck. Like it's just not as good to me as the movie, but it's probably just because I grew up on the movie. Now, what do you think you could pull off? I think I could pull off. I could pull off that part because I mean, I think Christian Bale's voice was like in a three note range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I could totally sing Santa Fe and crush that and, and do the dancing. Cause that's no problem. I could still dance. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe Phantom, though. Phantom? Yeah. Not the Phantom, the love interest. I forget what his name was, but that's the song that I sang when I was in seventh grade and I messed up the lyrics and I said, fuck, into the microphone and everyone <laughs> laughed, birthing this. <laughs> God damn, if it wasn't for that one <laughs> club. If it wasn't for cursing. You'd have a Tony. About... <laughs> 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 Damn. Uh yeah, I think <laughs> I think uh for me I would like I would like to be the Matthew Broderick character in who in from uh, the producers. I've never seen that. Oh, it's great. But it's I mean it's it's definitely like one of the funniest, you know, plays I've seen, but uh it is it is, like I couldn't play the Nathan Lane cat. Like I'm not going to pull off Nathan Lane's sure. ability. Like he's just, you know, he's on the level. And that's when I saw it. So that's who those people are to me. They've been replaced a hundred times before and it's a remake. Was Matthew Broder, he's, he's supposed to be stiff in that one. Like, is he stiff? Yeah. He always kind of plays like, cause I don't picture him to be like a stage. No, he's like a, a big, he can, he's a little nimble, but he is more of like, he kind of plays more of the straight Subtle. man, like well, a little bit of a worry wart kind right, of thing. Right. Um, or, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ Superstar. I mean, why should <laughs> yeah. you want to know why you obsessed with fighting? Dude, that, put, can you pull, oh, you can't pull up. Never mind. There's a picture of the, uh, from now look up, on. everyone should go watch the Jesus Christ Superstar from the 70s, yeah. where like they're all in 70s gear. And that guy who played Jesus was like, killer. So, his voice was incredible. He's also like, he died of AIDS. Did he? I don't know, but that would be a crazy end. Oh, yeah, Jesus. yeah. Well, what's kind of crazy <laughs> about that movie, the one like glaring uh-oh is the fact that there's one black guy in the movie and he's Judas. Yeah, but isn't... And he is the best vocalist he's I've incredible. ever heard. Isn't it I forgot what his name is. Isn't Carl it something like that? Like, is it, it is written. Isn't <laughs> Judas a black gentleman in the Bible? Am I incorrect? Yeah, I don't think they specify. I, th I mean, they specified about a lot of shit. Yeah, but Jesus was, they didn't specify Jesus was a white guy. That's true. That's our We just assumed. <laughs> yeah. Because he's good. The white innocence. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that's what I would do. And Brendan would, of course, do something from Lion King. Yeah, yeah. Brendan. He would be one of the things that travel down the, and then trip over his feet and the whole thing. <laughs> He'd be one of the hippos that threw Simba into the air <laughs> doing, I just can't wait to be king. <laughs> and, uh, all right. Um, Jack Rabbit says you have three scenarios number one become the host of a new relaunch of the show to catch a predator live where you are the host and live broadcast catching the predator after production lures them in but you have to leave here's the scenario however you have creative liberties with the show number two here's the scenario is turned into a tv show but you can but only one of you can be the host and the other two are paid fifteen thousand dollars to walk away forever because you will have weekly guests to fill their spots and you all have to agree on who the hosts are and you have on who the host is and you have no creative liberties but i have no problem so the 15 grand is where i sneer because <laughs> Wait, there's no a third one but hang on okay 
No. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, you all decline both and continue what you're doing now. Well, we know it can't be that. So it has, <laughs> has to be. I love the idea of, of doing a catch a predator. Lot. I mean, yeah. that's that would be because they're all getting caught. It's great. Sure. But. And you're like, you fucking scumbag. But you are still in a room and consumed by that energy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. But you Being, know me. I like tricking people. You so if love, I can and if you could trick a Betty. Then I'm only that then <laughs> then it's it's all positives for me. I'm pulling out my little trickeries and I'm doing it on the terrible. And I'm getting them in trouble and arrested. It's like this is a this is my dream, I guess. You drive up in the cop car and you're like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I break check them. <laughs> They go, ha! Ah. It's like, ah, ha, you fuck kids, yeah. and you're scared, little baby. <laughs> you pussy. Yeah, yeah. I would be, I would be overly consumed with the dark cloud of that. Like, that mm. would be insane. I would gladly hand over the hosting reins to anybody. However, the 15,000 is just unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, if I could stay on as an EP and I get bought out, even for a low amount like 15 grand but I can continue to make money for as long as the show is on the air and a creator credit. Well, now you're asking which one you got one or the other, but it is, a, but I am a creator. Well, all three of us are, what do you want? Creator, I want all of it. Creator, creator huh? executive producer, 15 K. See ya. You got it. You can host. I think definitely be, you. I think I'd be a good host. Definitely. Definitely, definitely not friend. And not just cause he's not here. I'd say it to his face. Yeah, no. I'll call him up right now. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> you wouldn't be a good host. If you hang up. <laughs> I think my whole career has been leading to a lucrative game show hosting deal. I mean, I'm de- I, I've developed so many fucking game shows. It's insane. I've pitched like 60 yeah. <laughs> throughout my time on this uh, showbiz planet. But um, I'm currently developing one that like I don't have to be host for at right. all. Like I'd like to. Well, be. that's the new yeah, that's the angle, right? I'd like to be, but hey, if you have somebody famous locked into a deal, they could do this. Yeah, <laughs> um, get paid. This next one comes from Matt Acker. All right, scenario, bros, you get trapped in a cryogenic freezing chamber, like Fry in Futurama. The dial spins, landing anywhere from a hundred years to one thousand years. How many years do you hope it to land on? Man, I will. I think a thousand. So I think a hundred would be sad. Like I think if you go a hundred like years, everyone I knew just died. Just died, and also it seems like things aren't slowing down in terms of just societal chaos. No. So there's certainly going to be some sort of windfall from that. A thousand years, at least you've made it through that and get to see what's on the other side. So even if it's just you standing on what remains of Earth while everybody else is living on Mars, you get to see that that happened. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm definitely going with a thousand years. Because yeah, you want to, you wanna, technology will progress in such a way. I mean, that's like 11 generations. Yeah, and there's probably like museums of your family at that point where you can <laughs> just upload whatever and yeah, then be in a room yeah. <laughs> be in a room with their holograms. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I'm going to get me a thousand years in the future, man. That'll be awesome. Yeah. I mean, this shit right now feels like like it does seem like that pot that's just like someone forgot that they left the pasta on and mm-hmm. it's just kind of like once in a while yeah. they'll boil over a little bit, but not not enough to alarm anyone yet, but you're like Someone's going to address that, right? Because this is going to cause. Yeah. Uh, not alarm everyone, let's say. There are yeah. some alarmed people. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. If you say for whatever reason you get sent a thousand years into the future, right? Uh-huh. If you, now they have the ability where you can go into a room, maybe you put on a suit, maybe you don't even need a suit, but you can have sex with holograms of people of the past. Like they've worked out their body where you feel like you're actually fucking that person. Do you only have sex with Erica? If it's a celebrity, if the person, but then it Scott, becomes like a role, everyone. but she's, she's there. They just have a hologram projected over her, like a little skin almost. No, no. Erica is gone. You yeah. are, exist a thousand years from now. They have technology to where oh. the holograms are so real and 3d and you can feel and touch and everything. So it's, 
sex. You're just having sex, but it's a hologram. Yeah. Full sense. Do you only have sex with your wife? I have sex with the wife first. <laughs> <laughs> and then in walks Rihanna, you know? <laughs> what are we talking uh, about? The only you say goodbye respectfully, and then you move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious that you're like, I'm going to finish with you the fastest. Yes. And yes. then I'm going to run through society. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a thousand years. High society. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. Um, okay. We got some from Clement. Speaking of to catch a predator, would that save kids? Or do you think people would? That's be been saving kids for sure. That's just like America's most wanted. Like they always. No, no, not to, not the show. I'm talking about the hologram. The holo- you always oh, you give the pedophiles holograms and then yeah. no I think if anything they would just have be better practiced for what to do <laughs> but, when they got them yeah they're like they're like sharks with the taste of human blood yeah yeah now they know that what they want now they're in the bay yeah kind of yeah <laughs> not good they're close to shore um I don't know if we did these because none of these are like um star or whatever marked but well. Either way, go to here's the scenario.com yeah. for everything this podcast. That means you can subscribe on iTunes, write and rate, write a review, rate the pod. It helps the visibility of the show. It gets it out to other people that are listening to maybe similar podcasts but are unaware of us specifically. So please do that. That helps. It's free to you. Go to youtube.com uh, slash here's the scenario, right? Or that's also up at here's the scenario.com. Subscribe. Thumb up the video, maybe write a comment. Doesn't matter what it is. It all boosts the algo. It all helps the show's visibility and it's free for you. And then if you want to financially back us, patreon.com slash scenario pod. We are putting out, like we said, two bonus episodes per week. It's crazy. The additional com- uh, content we're putting out there. We, uh, Brendan and I just did a Mark and Branders drink coffee on the road in North Carolina. And we did the history of Christmas which was awesome. We also did a Christmas trivia, which was super oh. fun. It was like a, just a lovely holiday ho- holiday app. So be sure to check that out. And uh, yeah, a bunch of stand up stuff, Feeney's podcast, Sagalo's raps, plus his weight loss journey. He's pumping out the content for the first time in his life. And uh, it's, it's a just bonus. Great. Yeah. Bonus episode of snarky too, which I think the last one, what was that Nicole? Like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Yeah, it was pretty long. So it's, um, it's you know, it. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of content. It's so pick and choose from the buffet of us, either individually or collectively. Or if you don't even want to, you know, if you don't want to listen to anything, just toss us a fucking bill. <laughs> but um, it, yeah. And, and also, Merry plates. Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. This is the year. This is the episode we should have dressed up. <laughs> we missed it again, folks. But um, regardless, if you guys are listening to this in Christmas. Uh, can you get, I'm going to be a Mohican son for New Year's if you're around, but I already know a bunch of people coming to that. So please go get tickets to laugh Boston, January 20th. Go get tickets, get the tickets. Go ahead. I'll wait. Laugh Boston, uh, com. Get your tickets right now. It's, uh, it's going to be a great time. First time doing comedy in Boston. And it's also a door deal. So that means <laughs> yeah, please baby. come hurry. out, show your yeah. love, show your support. Feeney is a fucking killer he's got a new hour since his uh. special so just you know come out support us i mean thank you everybody that came to uh wilmington north carolina and seattle there are, there are patreon people that are coming out to every single show which is super cool you guys are supporting the shit out of us and then there's obviously listeners from you know legion of skanks to real ass podcast to this to all of the shows jim and sam all the shows chip which mm-hmm. your episode was excellent i listened oh, you me. fit in really great with his insanity that that one jar one guy thing oh, changed the course yeah. cor- of my life yeah that is have bad. you seen that video before no but i saw it while listening oh like i just heard, you have I, to see it nope no i don't it's the worst i know i know i could hear it uh <sighs> dave Juskow has a crazy story about how he was sitting on a glass table and clipping his toenails and then fell through the table and like sliced his asshole open and he told the that amount of blood pouring dude, out it was like a it was like drip drip and then a faucet it was so much that was like my nose when i broke it it's so much it's yeah so but much. this is inside with glass still in there yeah. and he's like trying to pick it out austin texas uh <laughs> january 6th through the 8th i'm gonna be at uh creek in the cave Five shows, I believe. So fucking psyched for that. KP Burke is actually coming down. And then at the end of the month, I'll be in Boston at Hideout Comedy, the 21st and the 22nd. B Sags is coming. I believe Why Nicole, we- producer, not wife, is also coming. And we're going to shoot some Bean Town fucking content. Why don't we do that on Friday? Because I'll be there. What? 
You're the 21st? Yeah. I'm there the 20th. So I check out of my hotel on the 21st. Stay there the weekend. You guys get the, well, no. Uh, spots. What? Stay there the weekend. Do spots. Let's film stuff. Well, what are you going to talk about? That would be worst case scenario. We could do some <laughs> Friday. You know what I mean? We got to. No. I want to take a bath on the old uh, <laughs> you know, the hotel. It's a pretty. You know, but uh, we can. Uh, we we'll should, find you a hostel. We definitely have to. Yeah. <laughs> I will not. Uh, but this is. But we could. We'll, we'll all overlap. Yeah. That's great. Look at us. We'll get some seafood. Oh. I had such great seafood in Seattle. In my shit I was at. so excited. It was such great seafood. And yeah, thanks to the people who came out to uh, to Seattle that are listeners of the podcast, Irish Goodbye fans. Yeah. And here's the scenario. We really should start mentioning this more because it is clearly growing in the sense that, you know, obviously the numbers, all that stuff. But then you see the swell of support on, you know, in person, which is fucking awesome because the live show the stand up is where it's at, man. That's exactly what we do. This is what we, you know, started in this business as. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell a story on, on snarky. That'll, that'll like, really, I think, uh, that last show that I did in Seattle was, uh, I mean, it was one of the craziest shows I've ever done. And of course it was like, that's Let's just do it now. Well, it's going to take the whole, we have so many more questions All to right. get to. Uh, but there's, that's like, that's of course ones that like listeners came out to and so yeah, yeah. both, but a lot of the listeners, the majority of the listeners came out to both late shows, which were both like yeah. half the amount of people as the other one. So those people came out. I know it sounds like the last one was packed, but like truly, yeah. I had a bonus. So I was, you know, Good tickets you. moved. So. I mean, I will say that every time like it's a swath of listeners, I get into like a verbal fist fight with somebody <laughs> where they're like, yeah, this guy lives up to it, man. He's just uh, just fighting always. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> tough. It's tough. But what are we gonna do? You know. Um, let's get back into. Oh, wait, Nicole, where can people find you? Nicole C Lines on Instagram. That's all. L Y O N S. Yeah. Right. Yep. Thank and you. and uh, you know also if you're gonna uh, you know I think Brendan tweeted again. He did. <laughs> Brendan's been tweeting a lot, so we've been we'll keep you guys updated with Brendan's tweets uh, yeah. as if he's here. So Brendan just tweeted again. Uh, I can't open the Instagram app without thinking these people are sick, and I'm telling you that's what killed Facebook. Sell your stock. So there you go. What? There you go. Should we call him? I'm worried. Should we call him? Can can we call him, or is that going to be too like rude now? I don't uh, know. If he's... I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless, I'm gonna. Imagine he's just hysterical. Oh my god! Yo, hi, Brendan. You're live on the Here's the Scenario podcast. How are you? Oh, hey, hey, boys. I'm okay. I'm in a, uh, I'm in a wakey, funerally kind of place. <laughs> <laughs> a kind of place or an actual? Uh, it's a parking lot. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, how's uh, how's how are your tweets doing? <laughs> Where, uh, where, I'm, where? I'm losing, I'm losing my mind. We're reading your tweets on the podcast because you're tweeting the most anyone's ever tweeted from awake, and we're worried. Well, we are, I was driving to the place, which took an hour, so there's a lot of tweeting time. <laughs> That's good while you're driving. <laughs> no, I wasn't driving. My mom was driving. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, they've got cool birds here. They've like a in the center of it. There's a like the center of the lobby. There's like a bird. <laughs> there's a bunch of birds. <laughs> Are those just loose birds, like the ones that are stuck in an airport? Like in big malls? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to hear them? Hold on. I'll, I can walk up to the bird cage and because they're all tweeting, just like me. <laughs> oh, good <laughs> Hold on. Uh, you can't hear them. You definitely won't be able to hear that. <laughs> but they're all saying, they're all calling Instagram people sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We read that one. <laughs> yeah. We were confused, which is why we then called you. Yeah, yeah, I knew you guys would be insulted. <laughs> Instagram's all you got. I didn't even get it. <laughs> no, I just I opened up Instagram and I just keep seeing uh this person's face and I'm just like, this she is sick. I'm like, I'm like, get off of but I guess I'm tweeting. <laughs> You've tweeted six times in the last hour. Who is that? 
That's Just Michael T. Feeney. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that annoying guy in the background? <laughs> well, buddy, we uh, we wanted to call and say we love you and we support you and we hope you're uh, you're having a great day. Yeah, feel better, buddy. This uh, unrelated. This is the best episode we've done so far of it's the podcast. Killer, and we're gonna get back cool. to it. That makes me feel great. <laughs> oh, oh, here, oh, we'll monitor the tweets. Yeah, we're kidding. Come on. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Whatever. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen. <laughs> you are always gonna Just listen. A, a fan since day one. Yeah, yeah, I Lo- like it. Love you, pal. Love you guys. Love you. He's not doing well. Uh, <laughs> Clements. That, let's cut that whole part out. <laughs> I mean, we can't, in good conscience, show that to the world. <laughs> That's the Brendan you all love, big circus bear. I mean, he sounded like fucking Owen Wilson's voicemail in, in Wedding Crashers. Hey, it's yeah. John. <sighs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know if we read this one, so tell me, stop if we did. Here's a scenario. You get all the success you've ever wanted as a stand-up comedian. You become an icon. Oh. Widely regarded as one living. of the best to ever do stand-up. But you have to leave your wife and kid or your wife and dog, in Feeney's case, do you never see your family and wife uh, ever again to become an icon in stand-up? And then in parentheses, Brendan, I guess I guess Brendan would have to never eat Burger King or listen to Eminem or rap or whatever. <laughs> you get it. That was kind of perfect. The listening to Eminem really sold it. Because if it was burgers and Eminem, that's, yeah. a, that's a real Sophie's choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, no, cause here's the thing, man. You're like, what, what would you do? No. You can't not see your kid. No, I was just talking to, uh, to Stefano. We were, I was like, I couldn't like be happier in terms of what I'm currently making and yeah. how I'm living. And it's like, whatever, however, anybody views what we got going on. It's like a fair amount of people enjoy our work. We're constantly creating. We're constantly putting stuff and out. Growing. We have loving family members. We got a good team situation here. We love working with each other. It's like, yeah, I'm it's not going to of ideal. There's a, um, there's, there's a couple comedians that we know, you know, like casually, personally who was uh who are very successful like doing theaters and they are very alone yeah. and look very sad yeah. and talk about it uh yeah. but they also are like you know not in a relationship and just it's all work and reels you know on instagram <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that yeah. seems miserable yeah i mean i have uh i'm i'm becoming more and more accepting of my greatest successes being in like love and family. Like I'm fine with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have a fucking awesome wife. My kid is the shit. I love him more than anything. I really don't. I mean, stand up is what fuels me in a lot of ways and allows me to live sanely, but it's, it's a, a close. It second. ain't what it used to be. No, it's a close second behind yeah. my family. And I don't think I would have said that even a couple years ago. Yeah. <laughs> now here's another one. If you get Lewis's stake in you get Lewis's stake in Gas Digital, if any two of you fight him two on one and win. If Lewis wins, he gets ten percent of your earnings, uh even stand up for the rest of your career. The ten percent includes the member who doesn't fight. Who do you pick to fight Lewis? And do you try to jump the Puerto Rican rattlesnake for half of gas digital? Or do you admit he could beat any two of you in a fight? Now, until that last part of that last sentence, I was going to say, who gives a shit about owning <laughs> gas digital? Because oh, then, oh, oh, didn't we do this? Because we talked about if we won, we would just uh, incur all the debt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think like even after watching that pinata thing, it's very clear that Lewis is trained enough yeah. to absolutely handle us. Yeah. It would it probably wouldn't even be close, which I'm perfectly fine. Like this alpha, oh, or would you say that Lewis could beat you up? You mean somebody who trains multiple times a week? <laughs> like, yeah, I have no problem admitting Whoa. that somebody it's- outweighs me and trains can kick the shit out of me. He's actually a, a rapper and a producer. Who? I play a, Lewis? The guy who's, who submitted this question. Are we listening to his stuff? That's him making beats. Oh, I watch this guy's stuff. He's good. Well, that's the guy. <laughs> he hurt us, but yeah. he's good. Um, now, here's one more from him. Uh, here's a scenario. All three of you are in the bank 
in a bank cashing podcast checks together. Suddenly, the bank gets taken over by bank robbers. Who t- who takes the three of you and everyone else hostage? The bank robbers offer you to join them, but you have to kill the other two guys and everyone else with the bank robbers. Do you go down with the rest of the hostages, or do you join the bank robbers and kill the guys and everyone else? See, this to me is a ripe for the pick and easy situation. Is it? Because yes. do you think I think about this stuff a lot? Here's what I'm doing, and I think that's really the only choice. You tell them you're joining the other, and you're going to kill the others. You get the gun, and then you fucking John Wick shoot the bank robbers. Once they give you the right. gun, you go, maybe you, here's what I would do to really sell it, because of course they're going to be a little like wiry about giving me a gun right away. And they go, you killed, killed Sagalo right here. It was like on his knees, hands tied behind his back. And then I, what I would do is I would shoot near Sagalo, but like miss him. You yeah. know what I mean? Or maybe maybe I'll even put one in his calf or something like that. <laughs> See, Just... I was going to go with, I shoot Brendan <laughs> to prove my loyalty and then turn and be like. <laughs> I think, I think. Um, Will I th- that get us kicked off YouTube? What I just did. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually, now that I think about it, shooting, doing a below the kneecap shot to you would benefit the bank more than uh, than Sagalo, but because you would really sell the like, you motherfucker, you what betrayed you... us, I'll kill you, you it son would of a hurt. bitch. If you shot, I know, my but leg. Brendan would just go, ow, like if he would just, you, you know what I mean? Like just he would get lodged a half inch from all the <laughs> yeah. tough skin, yeah, the from bullets his... <laughs> not all the way in <laughs> from his rhino epidermis. Uh, but no, if you shot me in the leg, like if somebody shot me in the knee it would, the rest of my leg would fall like the sands of time. Like it would just (laughs) instantly erode into dust and fill my sneaker with ash and I'd have nothing from the hip down. Well, I wouldn't shoot you in the kneecap. That'd be terrible. I'll get you right in the calf muscle. I thought I'd go into shock. I feel everything. That's the thing. And while, (laughs) while you're hysterical, while you're hysterical, I will fucking start shooting people <laughs> yeah no i'd kill brendan but i i know what i'd really do and i think about I, I used to put myself in this situation a lot as a kid like I, I what would i do if somebody busted in with a gun like how do i defend it am i noble am i righteous what's the move and i've kind of always leaned into joining <laughs> like yeah. just been like you guys have guns i'm on your team right i'll take up whatever cause you're selling doesn't matter what if right then and there Let's say you're with Nicole or whatever, and two two bank robbers come in. They're like, "We got this money. We got to fucking hide here. We're gonna kill one of you. The other comes with us." And then you go, Nicole, I'm coming with you. And then they take off the masks, and Nicole goes, "You stupid son of a bitch! This was wow. a test." And then the three of them kill you. Who were they? But why did they take off their masks? Because it was all a ruse to to but test your loyalty. Who are they? Like, why would it paid stun- actors? There was a Nicole like hired Naomi them. Watts or like, <laughs> like, like paid, somebody we don't know. No, they're, they're unknown names. They're, they're, they're able to accept these kind of show up and pretend we're bank robber jobs. They're not A-list actors. I didn't know if like the money This is like was weekend so theater, the local Gerard theater Butler guys. Was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think you would be on to Gerard Butler. Yeah. Well, with Nicole, again, it's like all contingent on my son. If it's just Nicole... I wheelbarrow kick her into the oh, guns, yeah? and then I try to make my uh, escape behind some desks. <laughs> a lot of desks in your room, do you? A lot of desks. <laughs> um, no, in the bank. Oh, you're back in the yeah, bank. I'm back okay. in the bank. I've always been in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Parkin sends in a thing. Doomsday scenario. You need to tap into your cannibal side. Who would... Each Did you say you- Kelly Parkinson's? No, <laughs> Parkins said. Uh, oh, <laughs> I mean, not far. <laughs> who, would, if you have to tap into your cannibal side, who of each of you would you eat and why? I feel like we've done this we've or something like For this. sure done that. I mean, it's Brendan, Brendan is like a beer-soaked suckle pig. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd love nothing more than to just stick an apple in his mouth, tie his hands around his head and his feet together and just r- spit roast him. Yeah, he should do. There should to be a, shave him. He should do like a a porky pig thing for Halloween, where he just wears a little coat and the bow tie and no shirt and <laughs> the pants. circle. Bleep, bleep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be great. He does a little pig nose thing. That would be yeah. great. Mm, okay. Bad. From what? I said I feel bad. Oh. Not here to absorb this. Uh, yeah. Should we call him and tell him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring us up to the casket. I want your grandfather to hear this. 
Um, no, we like him. So no, when- <laughs> we like him. That sounds worse. No, no, guys, we promise. It's even <laughs> funnier because last week was the watch episode and was just so touching. That's right. That was Patreon, though. No, that's the real episode. Oh, is it? Because of the scheduling thing. That's right. Yeah, Brendan giving us. No, next week is. No. Well, it's going to be coming out next week, but yes. this is coming but it's, the following week. Yeah. So this- oh, this is like New Year. So happy New Year. Yeah, happy- <laughs> Hope you had a great. God damn it. We missed it again. <laughs> We've missed every holiday for seven years doing podcasts together. <laughs> God damn it. Well, Ugh. you know, it is what it is. I just like doing that because I know Brendan's going to listen. And I yeah. just, I, because Brendan does a fun By thing. By the way, we're not uh, presenting you with your birthday gift yet because it has sure. to come from the two of us. I understand. Yeah. Uh, but he, he also, you know, would do a fun thing every once in a while when it was Irish goodbye, when there would be like a, a weekend or a story that involved the three of us where he would like live text us responses going, yes. no, you're such a fucking idiot. That's not what I fucking said at all. And then you fucking said this. Okay, this part's hilarious. Like, you know, it was always a fun, so that's what I look forward to with this. Get ready for them, Nicole. They're very fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. Okay, so the next comes from Billy, Billy Deal. Hey guys, would you rather lose 50% of your, the size of your hard dick, both length and girth, six inch, is is now three. Yes, thank you for doing the math for us. But you can get but you can get hard at any time. Or gain fifty percent. Six inches is now nine. What's happening? Okay. Uh but you can you can only get hard once every six months. Keeping your same size is not an option. Do you still want to come just as much though? That's is there a way to come? I mean, I've pulled my pud soft until it's blurted out. So what about blue chew? Who's not a sponsor yet? No, but uh, n- no, but the half pipe dick medication sure is. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess. But uh, let's just pretend you can only get one erection, and that means does it last for a day, or is it in that moment? And if it your wife's not there, it lasts. You're fucked. Yeah, yeah, uh, man. I I think you can lose fifty percent and get yeah, it I mean, any I guess- time. It's better mentally. Like it'd be but worse. But I'm already hard whenever I want. But that, but but that's what I'm saying. But then you, if you lose half of it, you're like that. You can mentally deal with that more than like, hey, look how right. long this is, and then there's nothing to do with it. Which, by the way, there's an amendment to a bit that I did on Life Begins. It's more or less the same bit, but I talked about how awkward it is to pick up your infant child with morning wood Mm -hmm. and the same goes for your two-year-old child diving into your bed and like smashing his face directly (laughs) into your pole of a cock (laughs) did he ever grab it no 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 i mean he's gone for it and i've chopped him in the neck (laughs) you just do the caesar milan put him to sleep yeah From Jennifer, we got a couple more here. This is great. It's floating us the whole episode. It's excellent. We don't need no goddamn book. Um, or Brendan. Jennifer DeCrows. Hey, boys. How are y'all? We're very good. Thanks for asking. I was uh, binging on disaster movies, and I was wondering if you had to live through Cloverfield, Poseidon, I Am Legend, or Day After Tomorrow, which would you rather survive? Feeny, you are not required to kill your dog if you pick I Am Legend. Thank you very much. Uh, love to the fans. Happy holidays. I uh, appreciate the effort in pronouncing my last name, but it's De Cruz. Ah, oh, I said De Cruz. De Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have we said her name wrong? A bunch. Uh, it sounds like. <laughs> Just from the mere mention of like, get it right, De fuck Cruz. faces. Yeah. So, uh, day after tomorrow sucks because the, everything is it's like, cold. if you go outside, it's like negative 400 degrees and you freeze and die and instantly. And there's wolves. Yeah, fuck that. Um, Poseidon. Wolves, wolves might be the thing that I'm most scared of running into in nature. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I guess bobcats or whatever in, in, in LA. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, I guess a bear. I don't know. But it, wolves, for whatever reason, they feel like the velociraptor of mammals. They're very you smart. know what I mean? They're super smart. They're deadly as fuck. They're agile as shit. And they're big, dude. Like, yeah. they're not dog size. Mm-hmm. You always forget. My buddy Mishu growing up always had wolves. Like, you know, the friend that was like, yeah, my dog, it's half wolf, half dog. Yeah. It's like, well, then get rid of it. Yeah. And instead, it was just this fucking giant ass 
like five foot dog that's like tongue went down to the middle of its chest and its eyes were soulless and they're like ah you know it's good with the family but it might eat you so we're gonna <laughs> put it in the back the Prey? no Liam Neeson no but White Fang is one of my favorite movies it's a good movie he's about also, uh, yeah, White Fang. That's the one I was looking for. And Iron Will. So so Day After Tomorrow's out. I Am Legend sucks. I don't want to be fucking attacked. I don't want to be alone and have to f- solve the world and do the same thing. That seems like, oh, I, I would instantly, I would just kill myself. Probably. Yeah, just Cloverfield, jump. you're at least with pals. Cloverfield's good, but I'm going to make a case for Poseidon. What is Poseidon? Poseidon's when the cruise ship goes upside down. Okay. And it's, they're all, it's like still... There's still air because yes. of some dumb thing. So they're stuck upside down on the cruise ship. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Cause at least you can still like swim. You know what I mean? Well, you know what's happening, which is like we flipped upside down. How are we gonna get back? Versus how did they get out? Because I feel like, like a the big air pressure. Oh, yeah. it knocked it back over. I don't remember the end. That's stupid. I don't but, but that's how it got the there. pressure of like trying to get out of the boat. How would that even be possible. Well, it was a yeah, cruise like ship, so it's huge. Eyes, like, sucked out of your ears. <laughs> Maybe that was part of the problem in Act yeah. One, uh, but or in Act <laughs> Two, I guess trying to get out. I would say that would at least be because Cloverfield. It's like things are just exploding and collapsing. Yeah. But you're and with your friends. Yeah, I guess Cloverfield. I just. I will the say this go. though: is it happens to them while they're in the middle of a party. So the the chances of us either being shit-faced or on 200 milligram edibles yes. are sky high. It's- so to fight some eight-foot baby spiders coming off a giant <laughs> fucking city-sized mom spider is uh, pretty daunting while hallucinating. Yeah, I would not. I would not. But buy, uh- I've been planning for Cloverfield since like 08. So I feel like I'm ready. You've been planning for it? I've I never saw the, I heard the second one was fantastic. The 10 Cloverfield Lane with John Goodman? Yeah. It's fucking awesome, and he's excellent in it. The, it they're two completely different movies, though. It's not a but, shaky cam? No, no. It doesn't have T.J. Miller providing narration. But um, it that movie, it left such an impact on me because it's almost the perfect action movie because it's like an hour 10. It's fucking great. It has a buildup, so you become kind of invested with the characters. It's almost so calm, it's a little boring. Yeah. It's also a little lovey to the point where you're like, what the fuck is going on? And then it's from that moment on, nonstop shit getting fucking thrown through buildings. I haven't seen it since it came out. It is awesome. Every once in a while, uh, on the road especially, I'll just like, you know, take some whatever and just be engrossed in the mayhem of that movie. The shaky cam does become a little much, but each t- it's like, could you get out of the city? Yeah. Do you think you could? It's the ultimate survivalist game. I think I could. I could too. I'd get a fucking motorcycle. That'd be my first move. Dude, I just started getting into the city bike situation because the, the credit card that I have, it's, it's free. City bikes are free for up to 45 minutes at a time. So even just like today, I was like, at Gas Digital, and I'm like, yeah. oh, there's a bike station right outside. I'm like, oh, I'll just ride across instead of walking like eight avenues That's or whatever cool. it is. And the if you want the electronic city bikes, it's 12 cents a minute. So I got out of the subway at Union Square and went down to Gas. I got there, and it cost me a dollar. And it was like fun. I'm like zipping around. Like, this is great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. This so is, you get sideswiped. This is great. Car. Yeah, yeah. Well, those electric ones, too. You can really... You yeah, fly, dude. It's terrifying. It's pretty cool. I just don't have the confidence in my decision making to well, ride a bike in the city. What's more scary is actually the um the mopeds, like the the ones that Sagalo does, because yeah. you're go you're going like 25, 30 miles an yeah, hour. He's like smoking a joint while driving. And selfieing, <laughs> tweeting. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's that that those things are awesome. So I'm like, I'm getting into those now. I may take one. We should go take one up to B and H. Maybe. Just fucking wheel it up. Hmm? That oh. was uh, the electric bike that oh. runs on oil <laughs> that I decided. So not, <laughs> so not, not electric. Well, uh, I think that's about our show. You guys. <laughs> oh no, we're ending <laughs> on that. God damn that it! Just shows that we need Brendan after all. Yeah, we need him to be the ass at the end, not us. Yeah, this has been fun though. This has been great. This what a trip been... down memory memory lane <laughs> before things got complicated. Yeah, yeah, boy, oh boy. Imagine this is like Nicole and I going away for a weekend. Yeah. (laughs) The before times. Yeah.
<laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you very much for watching the show. We all love you. And uh, we'll Patreon. see you next week. Sagalo will be back. Don't worry. Don't everybody worry. calm the fuck down. And yeah. also, if people start going like, I'm not listening to this now or something like that. It's fine. Just know that we know. Oh, man. One of the and Clements of all people. He just commented on the here's a scenario thing of today of you being angry. And he goes, Canon in Canon mode. <laughs> he put a, <laughs> what I just think so. Fair enough. He's back on. Yep. He's back in back in the circle of trust. That's right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Here's the scenario is Mike Feeney, Mike Cannon, and Brendan Sagalow. Executive producers Robert Kelly and Matt Kleinschmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information about the show, visit Here's the Scenario.com. Here's the scenario.